All right, hi students, welcome to exercise 32, uh, solving problems that are modeled by polynomial functions. All right, example one, we're going to start with a block of snow. So block of snow is three-dimensional. Um, and for fist value Voyager, and it measures three meters by four meters by five meters. Okay, but the block melts in a way that each side melts at the same rate, which means if the height's losing some length, the, it, at the same rate, it'll decide and the side will also be losing length. So after a few days of warm weather, the volume of the block is now 24 meters cubed. So just part A, uh, here's a sketch of the block with its new dimensions. So you have 5, and it's going to melt by x, 3 is going to melt by x, and 4 is going to melt by x. So x is the length in meters that has been melted, which is basically what we need to find. So write an equation that models the new volume of the block of snow. Well, we know the new volume is 24. And the 24 is equal to the 3, so this is 24 meters cubed, the 3 lengths multiplied together, which is length times height times width. So we have 5 minus x times 4 minus x times 3 minus x. So this is the equation of the volume of the new, or of the melted block of snow. So find the dimension of the block of snow after it's melted. So basically what I'm asking you to do is solve for x. Right, so this is what it's asking you to do. Solve for x. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do to start is I'm going to have to expand all of this, make it because it, it's currently equals to 24, and then bring everything to the same side, make it equal to zero. Right, so we need one side equal to zero, and then start factoring again. Okay, so let's try to use as much space as I can here. So I'm going to start over here on the left hand side. So I'm going to have 24 equals 2. I'm going to start multiplying these things together. So the first two together, you're going to have 20 minus 4x minus, minus 9x minus 4 and minus 5 plus x squared. All this times 3 minus x squared there. Now one more multiplication to do, right? So you have 24 equals 2, 60 um, minus 20x minus 27x um, plus, um, so where am I at now, um, so it's 60 uh, plus 9x squared and then plus 3x squared and minus x cubed. Okay, so notice the x cubed is negative here, which means I'm going to move everything over to the other side to make sure that the x cubed is positive at the end. So we're going to have x cubed, okay? We've got 12x squared together. Bring it over to the other side. It's negative 12x squared. We've got negative 47x. Bring it over. Positive 47x. And we have 60. Bring it over. Negative 60. We have minus 36 and equals to 0, okay? So that was step one is to make all this equal to 24. Expand it. Make it equal to 0. So now I can factor this trinomial. Uh, not trinomial, polynomial, sorry. And the possible zeros I'm going to try are the factors of 36. So, quickly looking, if you plug in x equals 1, I believe it works, because this would be 1 minus 12 uh, minus 36 and plus 47. So if x equals 1, we'd have 1 minus 12 plus 47 minus 36, which is equal to 0. Check. Okay, so that was easy. We found our first zero, so now I'm going to use my synthetic division to find out the rest. So we have 1, the, the coefficients are 1, negative 12, 47, and negative 36. Okay, so now I bring down the 1, multiply, negative 1, multiply, 36, multiply, 36, 0. Okay, so I can rewrite by using factors as x minus 1. So this is the factor that comes with our original zero, right? So the first zero we found is one, which means x minus one is a factor. And now the rest of our coefficients here are explained in the synthetic division equals zero. And so I now have x minus one, x. Um, now that I think about it, I don't think we can factor this here. Right? Because there's not two numbers that multiply 
the 36, positive 36, so two negatives or two positive, that would add to negative 11. Therefore, um, I will not have this part. And this is as far as we go. Okay, right here. Okay, so what are the, the possible values of x? Well, x is obviously equal to 1 here. So that's one possible of zero. Now, what other values are here? Okay, so to check if there's any other values of x that are possible, I could use a quadratic, the quadratic formula here. Okay, so I'm going to move up here. Okay, so now we have x equals zero. Uh, sorry, x equals one as one of the possible factors. We also have x equals two. Well, again, going back to the quadratic formula, 11 e plus or minus square root of negative uh, 11 squared minus 4 times a times 36, that's c, all of that divided by 2 times 1. Okay, so if you look closely, inside of the square root, you're going to have 121, and then you're going to have minus 144, which means this is the square root of negative 23, I believe, over 2. Well, since this is impossible, square root of a negative is impossible, there are no zeros when it comes to this factor. So, uh, negative square root of 23, impossible. Therefore, x equals 1 is the only zero. Okay, so that means x equals 1 is the value of x. It's the only one we can have, and therefore, find the new dimensions of the block. So if x equals 1 is the, is the, uh, the value, then 5 minus 1 would give you 4, so that'd be 4 meters. 4 minus 1 would give you 3 meters, so it'd be 4 meters by 3 meters by 2 meters. Okay, so don't forget, 5 minus x was your original, and 4 minus x and 3 minus x, those were the original dimensions. But because x equals 1, subtract 1 from each, and there's dimensions. Notice that this is equal to 24 meters cubed, and that's what the block is now, 24 meters cubed. All right, next example. We're building a box by cutting the corners and folding the sides up. So here's a piece of cardboard here, okay? So what you do is you cut the corners from a, piece, from a box, and then you fold those sides over to create a box, a three-dimensional box, obviously with no top. So, so we're going to cut the length of x, so we're going to say that each length here, so this length, that length, this length, that length, they're all the same, okay, and they're all x, okay, and normally the sheet of cardboard would measure 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters, okay. So find an equation that represents the volume of the box if v is the volume in centimeters cubed. Okay, well, if you look at the three sides, this side over here, well, normally this was 30, correct? But we took off an X on both ends. So this, now, this new side, maybe I'll write this out here, this new side only from here, right, to there, would be 20 minus 2X. Sorry, 30 minus 2X, because normally 30, and you subtract two sides. Same thing for over here. So you would only be going from there to there, right? And th this would be 20 minus 2x as well, since you took off x from each end. Okay, so the volume would be equals to a volume of the box. So you got to imagine that the sides are folded, right? So the height of the box would be x. The length of the box would be 30 minus x. Sorry, 30 minus 2x. And the uh, width of the box, let's call it, would be 20 minus 2x. And there we go, there would be the volume of this box. Okay, three dimensions are those three. So we wish to create a box with a volume of 1,000 centimeters cubed. So we want the volume, whoops, we want the volume to be 1,000 centimeters cubed. What length would X have to be to, uh, to have to cut to attain this volume? And I'd also like to know what the dimensions of this box would be. Okay, well, um, I'm obviously saying that the volume is equal to 1,000. So I say 1,000 here equals to x times 30 minus 2x, 20 minus 2x, okay? Uh, and then I can multiply 
this x in here. So basically I need to solve for x now, right? That's the idea. I want to solve for x. I have to make equals zero on one side, which means I need to expand this, bring it all to the same side, make it equal to zero, and then factor. So very, very similar to our last problem. Okay, so I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna move over here. Uh, so we're gonna have 1,000 equals to 30x minus 2x squared. So I just multiply the x in here, and now I have 20 minus 2x here. Don't forget this multiplication, this is like two times three times four. So the first thing you do is two times three, and then the, all this times four, for example. So now you have 1,000 equals two, and I'm gonna multiply all this stuff together now. Okay, binomial times binomial, should have four terms. So we have 600x um, minus 60x squared uh, minus 40x squared plus 4x cubed. Okay, so again, I just multiplied this times this and that. Okay, so notice that the x cubed, the largest power, okay, is Four is four. Or sorry, the largest power, the coefficient is four. And it's positive, so I'm going to bring everything over to this side. So I'm going to have zero equals two, four x cubed, minus one hundred x squared, plus six hundred x minus a thousand. All right. Well, a few ways to go at it. Um, one thing I would suggest is I could divide each one of these by four. So notice it's an equation. So if, if I have an equation like this, I can simplify just by dividing by four because all these numbers are divisible, divisible by four. So you're going to have now x cubed minus 25x squared um, plus 150x minus 250 just to help simplify a little bit. Okay, so next thing we're looking is for values of x. Okay, so it's not as obvious here, um, but something you can just quickly look at, can, can x equals one happen? Well, notice when x equals to plus or minus one, all you're gonna have to look at is the coefficients, and obviously those coefficients cannot add up to zero. So I'm not even gonna try x or plus or minus one. Okay, so with some background knowledge, and guess and checking, notice that you have to be a factor of 250. I'm going to try x equals 5. In hint, I think it's going to work. Okay, so I'm going to try x equals 5. So that's going to give me 125 minus 625. So that would be plugging in 5 here. So 5 squared is 25. 25 times negative 25. 625. Uh, plus 750 minus 250. And lo and behold, this is equal to 0. Okay, so that would be your first factor, your first zero that you can find. So the, again, we do our synthetic division, right? You take your five, you put your coefficients here. We're going to check if there are other possible zeros. Okay, so just to change color to make it a little bit visually appealing. So you drop the one times five times 20 and times five. Oops, that should be positive 50, right? And then you go uh, positive 250 and 0. Okay, we found our first 0. This 0 confirms that this is a, a 0, actually. Okay, so now, again, we're going to move up here. So what I have to factor, okay, so don't forget we have the 0 equals. And we have x minus 5 is one factor, right? So this comes from are zero. And now the coefficients would be x squared minus 20x plus 50. Okay, and again, we are in a situation where this cannot be factored. And if you use the quadratic equation, you're gonna have a negative square root, I believe. But we're gonna just prove that right now. Actually, no. So we're gonna just try that. So x is going to be equals to 20 plus or minus square root of negative 20 squared. Sorry, not to the power of 4. I'm just going to give myself a little bit more room here. So this is negative 20 squared minus 4 times 1 times 50 
Okay, all that divided by two times one. Um, if you look at it uh, closely, you're going to have x equals to 20 plus or minus square root of. Oh, that actually works because this is 200 squared, which is 400. 400 minus 200 is 200. That worked out. Divided by 2. So there is another value of x here. You would have x equals to 20 plus square root of 200 over 2 and 20 minus square root of 200 over 2. Okay. So I'm just going to round two values here. So you'd have x equals to uh, 17.0. 7, 1, and you'd have x equals, again, I'm just plugging in this into my calculator over here. So I did 20 plus square root of 200. So I'm 20 minus 200 square root uh, divided by 2. So you'd have 2 point, whoops, sorry, 2.929. Uh, so I just rounded the three decimals here. Okay, so there are three possible values. There are x equals 5, right? That comes from this one. And there are two x values here. This can't be factored, but still can provide us zeros. So those are the three zeros that we get. Notice that one of these zeros has to be rejected. Okay, So we have to reject this value here. And the reason for that is if x is equal to 17.1, going back to here, okay, this is 17.1 and this is 17.1, obviously this side of 20 couldn't exist because this 17 and this 17 already make 34. Same over here, 17, 17 makes more than 30. So that's an extraneous root, so we reject that one. But the two other values do work. So we have x almost equals to 3, a bit less than that, right? And we have x equals to 5. So the possible dimensions, okay, we have two options. So when x equals to 5, that one's easy, we're going to have uh, 5, uh, I think these are centimeters, by, so again, I'm, all I'm plugging in, I'm plugging in 5 into these values here. So that'd be x equals 5, that's 5. You'd have 20 over here. Let's see if I can raise up just a tiny bit. You'd have 20, 30 minus 2x, so 20 centimeters, and by 10 centimeters. And notice that the multiplication of those three would give you 1,000. Okay, the other option is when x is equals to 2.929. Okay, a little bit less obvious, but you're going to have uh, 2.929. Oops. Let's start over. Maybe give myself a bit more space. 2.929. Okay, you're going to have uh, 2.929 centimeters. Okay, by. So again, I'm just plugging them into there. So you'd have 30. Again, you got your calculator for this. So you have 30 minus 2 times 2.292. So you'd have by 24.142 centimeters. And for the last one, so again, I'm plugging in x into this one, which is 20 minus 2 times 2.292, which is 14. Whoops. 14.142 centimeters. Okay, and notice if you multiply all of those three together, um, you should get about a thousand centimeters. Again, we're rounded, so it's not exact, but we're rounded three spots. Okay, guys, I know that's a little long, and those are long questions, but uh, I hope most of that made sense.